Hello, everyone. How are you? Yes? Tired? No? Okay, so um, my name is Hara. I'm pleased to meet you all. I work for a company called Just Giving, and I have the chance to lead the UX team there. How many of you do you know Just Giving? Ooh, quite a lot. And how many of you do you actually know us for charity fundraising? Yes, and how many of you know us for crowdfunding? Cool, so that's the challenge we are facing at the moment. <laughs> um, so I started that presentation um, and I was thinking at the very beginning to talk about how mobile phones can actually change giving. But um, as I was preparing for it, I actually thought, well, that sounds very technical. I should um, better make it more user-centric. So I changed the title to how we, experienced designers, including you, can change the world of giving. And um, what do we do internally today at Just Giving to make it happen? So I started with a very, very basic search. Um, and I typed the word uh, mobile definition. Um, has anyone done that? Yeah, no, it's very dummy, that's why um, I only do those things. And I found 220 million results um, of this. So um, all the references um, and the visual cues at Google today showcase the mobile device when we talk about mobile. But the actual definition, it actually shows that mobile is actually an adjective and, and it means that we are able to move or be, mo or be moved freely and easily. And then secondly, is about technology. And I did the same thing about mobility. And I think someone else talked about that before. So 75 million results, almost. Um, and the image was that. So when we talk about mobility, we talk about more, more about cars, more about the medium of how do we um, move freely and easily. And the definition is very, very similar. So it's a noun and it's again the ability to move or be moved freely um, and easily. But what I want to talk about and the point I want to make today is that I think so far everyone, including our, myself, we have connected a lot the sense of being mobile with the mobile device. And it feels like that a little bit as a comparison, like we have connected the word freedom with technology. And in so many instances, this is true because uh, mobile phones have been liberating for the past few years. They allow us to communicate wherever they are, wherever we are, and they allow us to um, contact our favorite people with video calling and feel together. Um, and they prevent us from getting lost in the city um, and they, they help us avoid so many hassle, so much hassle. But it's actually mobile phones are the nuts, <laughs> are the, the, it's the bolt, it's, it's, it's the infrastructure, it's the hardware. And when we talk about mobility, I think um, we are describing more the context. And the context is how do we apply technology to make it all work together. And to give you a very basic example, um, in Africa, when they use SMS and when they use the mobile phones, they're actually using it for farmers to pay their bills. Um, and in the US, it's actually the main tool for teenagers to communicate with their friends. So there is a difference when you talk about the same type of technology, but when you apply it in different contexts. <coughs> And that's where I think we should be focusing more about in the context than in the mobility. And I think I'm making the same joke with someone else, but mobility trumps mobile. And this is not something I say, something David Armano said in the Harvard Business Review, but essentially the context wins over the technology. Um, so why is this relevant to giving? <coughs> well, Giving from its infancy, from its birth, it's um, a very mobile concept itself. Um, it started a bit like that. Uh, so people were mobilizing around the city and they were taking paper forms, the oldest, the oldest means, and then they were taking buckets to fill them in with funds and coins. Um, and uh, they were gathering funds in order to realize, to make good things happen. And today, in the modern city, uh, guess what? We still see that. 
Um, we still see forms in so many places, and we still see buckets. They're everywhere. <laughs> And um, we started seeing other, other ways of actually donating uh, to causes, and there were SMS, and uh, Just Giving has been powering that for quite a while. And then progressively, we've started seeing something you're all familiar with, um, online mobile donations. And that multiplied quite fast to the point where today, we have um, more, almost 3 million visits per week at Just Giving just from mobile phones, which makes up to almost 63% of our total visits per week. Now, what really excites me and what really makes it interesting is if we zoom into those situations. So, on the top, it's just different ways of giving funds, but if you zoom in, you will see that in, in, in social scenarios, in, um, in layers of the, uh, of the urban environment we live in, um, we still give in, a very offline, in offline ways. So in a tube situation, you will see buckets and forms. In uh, Tate Modern, I'm sure you're all familiar, familiar with, <laughs> you will see donation boxes where you can drop your coin in. Um, and in, you will see SMS as well, and there is a little, little code down there that you actually type it on your phone and you send an SMS donation. Really, really efficient, really, really fast. Um, and this is the newborn baby of my colleague Rob. It's his first visit at a pub and he looks at the tin. <laughs> so, still offline, um, still exciting, but very, very much offline, uh, very, very, very much old-fashioned. Um, no modern technology there. And what we observed at Just Giving as well is that if, if you go to the online mobile donations now, you, you see um, humans out completely out of context. So you see us isolated, uh, browsing on a mobile device, expecting to actually absorb the whole story, the whole cause, um, the whole context about what that person that is fundraising is trying to do through one mobile screen. Um, and we thought that's not that fair. <laughs> so we, we actually tried to um, enrich that mobile experience. Um, and we've done that by evolving online storytelling. Uh, so you can go at Just Giving today. You can open your mobile device. I'm not going to do that now because internet is not always working. Um, and you can actually start the campaign in minutes. You can create your own page in just a couple of clicks and you're out there, you can raise funds for your own personal cause if you want. Um, and you can also add layers, you can add location and you can add categories in order to help others discover your cause around the world, wherever you are or wherever they are. And you can also add um, the most important layer for me, which is you can express, you can add expression, you can express yourself, um, you can showcase your impact, and you can actually evolve your giving story as it goes. You don't, you don't have to say everything up front, but you can actually use your mobile devices and the capabilities they have in order to post rich media, video, images, to showcase what you're up to. But, um, so we've done that, but it wasn't enough. <laughs> um, and we did one more thing. Um, we do one more thing as a culture at Just Giving, which is hackathons. And I'm sure you're all familiar, familiar with the concept. Um, and our developers said, well, um, it shouldn't be just us that are developing apps. Um, for good, it should be everyone. And we were like, yeah, it should be everyone. So we created an API so that people can actually um, utilize that type of technology we have and um, imagine their own scenarios they want to um, they wanna, um, introduce giving to people. And we saw a very good instance of it, which is Snap Donate, um, familiar name, but with a different meaning. And it's giving on the go, um, and this is how it works. You see a charity logo probably somewhere um, at a poster or at a bag, at a t-shirt, at the newspaper. You select the amount, 
and, and you give. And that's it. Um, and, and that was the, as close as we could actually go to introducing giving within the city, within the urban layer. Um, but as every design team hopefully does today out there, we're always questioning ourselves, what's next? What Technology is evolving every day. We as humans are evolving every day. So how can we change the world of giving in the future? And we hope that we can follow the following principle and always bring those two layers as close as we can. So I think that's the challenge we are facing today. We are focusing either too much on context or too much on technology, but we are not trying to bring those two very close to each other. And we actually started and we found that um, giving is, um, it's almost an equation of um, different things. Um, but more, more and beyond is it's an act. Um, and when you do give, you feel really good about it. Um, and you give something, which can be funds um, or help or goods. You don't just give money, you can give other things as well. Um, and you give to someone, and that someone can be a charity, an organization, a school, an individual. And you give in order to achieve something great, greater than you. So you give in order to fight homelessness, you give to make a business more sustainable, um, or the environment more, more sustainable, um, you give to help a friend in need. So um, our team um, kind of uh, has this ritual every once a month, and we go into a gallery space, which is very, very bright and very, very nice, um, and we take it over, and they have really nice glasses where you can put all the post-its up in the air. And we do this thing which is called the magic circle of innovation. It's like a game. So we, three people get together and we get in the circle and we start discussing about the latest trends of experience design and technology and how can we bring the two together. Um, so we've done that and we came up with some future forward ideas like how can we fight the problem of homelessness? And we were questioning ourselves, what if we came, with, we came up with that crazy idea? What if we can stick, put a sticker, an NFC sticker, on every single homeless person so that you can pass by and actually tap by your card and give them something? And what if that is actually centralized as a, as a system so that um, obviously money doesn't go to that individual directly, but it's managed by an organization that is helping financially that individual to move to the next step. And uh, whoop, we looked at um, one more context, which is um, the city um, and our shopping behavior. Um, and what we saw is that um, as humans, we don't have time uh, to actually decide where to give, how much to give, uh, what is the right cause? There are so many parameters out there. But what we do have time to do every day is spend. Like we spend in shopping malls, in the supermarket, we spend everywhere. So we thought, what if we could actually create an aggregator of your spending and just the little cents you don't give to your supermarket, you give, you give it to your giving wallet. So at the end of the month, you have like a sufficient amount to actually go to a cause you really want to uh, you really care about. And then we actually um, discussed a little bit, and this is very much early days, about um, how giving can actually influence human interaction and how can it help us build more relationships between us. Um, and um, the scenario we, we've thought most of is, imagine like uh, you're in a building, I live in a building at the moment, and I think I must know one of my neighbors, <laughs> but that's as far as it goes. Um, so imagine like a way um, where uh, you could actually discover what um, your neighbors need, or you could actually post what you need and you can give to them like, and imagine that being facilitated 
by a very smart bot <laughs> that can actually help you vet that individual and have a conversation with them and even meet them at the end um, and have a very face-to-face -face human interaction. So we dis um, discussed all those scenarios and ideas um, and we actually started working on something much more tangible which uh, is called Tab Donate, um, and it's, a, it's an experiment. We are running it with charities, um, so it's very much an alpha project, and we are inviting them to co-create it and co-test it, so we are going to be observing them in the next few weeks. Um, but it's a very, very simple idea, and what it's trying to do is actually to, re not replace, but build a different um, way of giving on the go with the metaphor of the bucket. So um, there is a companion app, um, which is um, really, really simple. Um, you click donate two pounds, you tap your card, um, and your donation is finished. As simple as that, but it looks like that. <laughs> so it's very much a bucket, right? Um, and it has a a terminal that accepts NFC payments in it, um, and uh, it has a companion app for the charity member to actually um, uh, help them manage um, everything um, in one go. Um, and uh, charities are obviously very much excited about it because they're dealing with that problem um, and they have no centralized way, but we are more excited to see whether that would actually um, cause more people to um, to give instantly and, and on the go um, as cash is becoming less and less um, available in our lives. So, just a couple of final words that um, giving is, is definitely becoming more optimistic in the future and it can shape in so many forms. Um, we are all becoming more philanthropic with the technology that we have in our hands. But if, um, as experienced designers, we can actually bring those two layers closer to each other. Um, so think about real life, more real life scenarios and um, more, more types of technology and layer those two on top of each other, then I think we will have a much, much better future to live in. So that's it. Thank you very much.